So sometimes with NoSQL solutions, you're simply ingesting data as fast as possible. Other times, you need to manage document access. Sometimes you need to say, don't touch this. Let's see how Couchbase handles it. So we've been talking throughout this entire course about CAS, sometimes known as check and set or compare and swap. So each document managed by Couchbase has a CAS value in its metadata. These are 64-bit integer values, which we simulate in these slides with shorter numbers, but you can imagine why. So each document modification, every time you replace a document, its CAS value changes. Let's take a look at this. So if we had doc IDs 1, 2, and 3 here with some initial CAS value, and then doc ID 1 was replaced, updated, with a different value, the new document has the same document ID, but a different CAS value. And so with each replacement of a document, the CAS value changes. Anytime you attempt to replace or remove a document that has an old CAS value, you're going to get a CAS mismatch exception. Now, notably, upserts do not throw this exception. So think about how there are two different possible workflows. Workflows based on insert, replace, and remove operations where CAS is being checked. You have locking in place, as we'll see. Or maybe you just need mass ingestion, in which case upsert speeds you to the solution. So let's visualize how this behaves. Imagine you have a system and there's two threads, thread A and thread B. Thread A gets a particular document with a particular document ID and a CAS value. Thread B also gets that document. Note, they still have the same CAS value. Thread A then modifies the document, here changing the role to admin, and then it does a replace. The server updates the CAS value for that document. Remember, it's simply been added to the write log. Then thread B also modifies the document to a different role and attempts a replace operation. But at this point, the CAS values no longer match. And because thread B was attempting a replace, a CAS mismatch exception is thrown for you to handle however appropriate for your application. So how do you implement CAS then? Well, in a sense, it's built in. We've seen how with JSON document, we have this factory method where we're creating each individual document. And remember, it's the document that we're passing off to the server when we are inserting and removing and replacing documents and such. Although, recall, you have a choice of passing documents or just IDs. So if you're managing CAS, you're going to want to be passing documents to the server. So it's this create method that creates the JSON document and the ID and the CAS value are being persisted within this particular object as metadata. That means to implement CAS, what you're doing is you need to use document objects and you need to be using appropriate operations. So in your code, you may have some local entity and you use that to create the JSON document. Now notice what's going on here. The JSON document manages CAS values in its own metadata. But throughout this course, we've been illustrating how for other purposes, you may need to be serializing and deserializing from local domain objects to and from the JSON document format. So if you are doing that, that means in your own entities, you need to be persisting the CAS value. And that's what we've demonstrated in the code you're looking at. So you see here, as we create the JSON document, if we have a CAS value that we've persisted in a local object, we can get that value out of our object and pass that as we create the JSON document. Then we pass it through the rest of the system as appropriate. Now recall, CAS values are checked for replace and remove operations. So if you are wanting to build an application where locking of documents is relevant, then you're going to base your entire workflow of the app around insert, replace, and remove. If this doesn't matter to you and you simply want pure speed, locking is not an issue, then you'd focus on using upserts. In the lab, we're going to have you implement optimistic locking using check and set values.
in your code where you are serializing to a JSON document, you're going to be implementing what is necessary so that your local domain type, which is persisted, a check and set value, has that value written into the JSON document, which is then returned and passed along as appropriate for insert, replace, or remove operations as relevant. When you're done with that, come on back. We've got one more lesson giving you an idea of where you can go next to learn more about Couchbase.